time for our Conan review. So, if you're a fan of axes, miniatures, death or nipples, it's time to get excited. Conan is a board game representing years of work from talented designers and artists and it wants to drag you kicking and sweating into Robert E. Howard's Hyborian age. We've got one very big snake, four separate boards, no less than ten individual boobs and most importantly, eight scenarios. I've checked my calculator on this one and... That is just your hands. That averages, There's nothing... That averages out at 1.25 boobs per scenario. Oh, what a time to be alive. So, as the proud owner of this game, you're going to pick a scenario and you are going to set it up. And it's going to look like this. Now, depending on the scenario you've picked, you're going to have between one and four people, each playing Conan friends, and you're going to have one more player playing the evil overlord dungeon master type person who controls all the monsters who want to kill Conan! Or, more realistically, just stop this homicidal spinning top of a protagonist. Now, there are about 20 things we want to tell you to help you figure out if you should buy this box of brutes and glutes, but we're just going to start with how you play. As the good guys in this game, the missions might have you defeating a band of pirates, or rescuing a princess, or saving a village, or a combination of the three, but the play-by-play -play in this game is all about managing your energy represented by these crystals. Now every turn you get a free kind of gasp of energy which allows you to move for free a couple of places, but after that everything you do costs crystals. You know, you want to attack a man? Go for it! It's going to cost you a crystal. You want to attack a man and really hurt him? That's going to cost you two crystal. Oh. Oh. No, but seriously, I want this man to die. Maybe put in four crystals? Five? Each of the actions that you can take in a turn has a cap limit on how many crystals you can spend on it in a total turn. But it's up to you how many you do them at a time. So you can just put one in and have one little attack. Or if you really, really want to make sure an attack lands, you can be like, I'm going to put four in at once and have one big attack with four dice. There are options here. And as long as you've got the crystals available and you haven't gone over the cap for that action, you can just keep spending on as many things as you want. If Daddy's got the magic moolah, Daddy can buy the magic shoes. You can run into a room and kill a man, and then run out of the room, and then run back in and kill another man, and open a chest, and then run out of the room, and then run back in! I mean, there aren't actually any magic sh shoes or magic money. I made that bit up. It's vital to note that characters in Conan are powerhouses. If these crystals represent the air in your lungs, it's possible to huff it all out in one glorious exhalation of violence, clothes lining miniatures off the board. But after that, all the crystals you spent go in the spent box and you only get two back each turn. Unless you decide to have a chilled one, you don't do anything but move an attack, and then next turn you get five back, which still isn't enough. Matt, I can't believe you wrote having a chilled one into the script. The manual specifically says it's a cautious stance. It's having a chilled one! Now, a system this flexible feels freeing in many regards. You can do what you want, but at the same time, this possibility is kind of an electric buzz that keeps zapping your muscles and encouraging you to behave erratically and oddly, turning you into a drunken, giddy gambler and going big. But most of the time you won't. Most of the time you'll play it simple, you'll be... Conservative, move there, do this, keep it calm. But the temptation to go big is constantly there. You can spend a crystal at any point to re-roll any dice, which means everything gradually tends to just slip away from you. And you're constantly wanting to do something epic. You've got the ghost of Christmas potential carnage waking you up in the middle of the night and just showing you how beautiful the world could be if you just give in if you just let Conan bet everything on red. Rivers and rivers of red. These all-out moments give the game an enormous sense of momentum, creating the tiny stories of glory on the board that you can clearly envision. You're suddenly attacked by someone hairy and you kill them. And then you kill someone else who is also hairy. And then there's someone else who's maybe less hairy? But then you kill him, 
And then you throw your axe across the whole board and land it in the chest of an unsuspecting bastard. These sudden bursts of potential are what makes Conan amazing. But also, don't go, you know, too mad because these crystals are also what you need to defend yourself and they're also your health. So yeah, don't, don't go too mad. But obviously, I mean, obviously, do. Do. Do go mad. And this, this wonderful system of crystals is actually only half of what makes this game so neat. The other system that's just as simple and evocative is that the hero team can alternate their actions all the time as they see fit. And that's relevant for two reasons. The first of which is that when you're outnumbered in a space, it means that everything's harder. It means that you pay more crystals for everything. So you get stuff like, if Conan wants to kill this captain of the other ship, Shevatas might move into the space to pair some people off. So Conan can make that leap costing less crystals and then Shevatas could leave the space and then open a chest. And because it only ever costs one crystal to throw and catch something, if Shevatas finds a life potion, he can throw it to Conan who can catch it, drink it, become powered up and then well, then, and then what happens, right? Because you've just put in a massive blood-soaked gamble. And the question is whether that's going to pay off. And if it does, and you've spent all your crystals and you slay that captain, you're going to high-five, you're going to feel great. But if you do all that and then you miss, that's scary. Now you're on the enemy ship with pirates all around you and no friends nearby. And it should be scary. The tension you find in this board game is absolutely the same tension you find in the Conan comics and films where blood lies around every corner. And this choreography you get in the board game of players running in, helping each other, throwing weapons and slaying people to help one another, that's the same panic second to second choreography you find in the Conan intellectual property. And although it wasn't always entirely intentional, much like all the original Conan stuff, this game is frequently very funny. You can sit and plan and come up with this idea, I'm gonna dash in there and kill these guys, and then when you execute it, you can very quickly find yourself running in, fumbling your dice roll, and oh no, it's all over. You've, you've, you've faffed it all up. Although thankfully, Conan's ability to smash through walls frequently gets you out of all sorts of trouble. Just two crystals, he just smashes through a wall. All the while, the friend playing the bad guys gets one hell of a toy to play with. Whenever the heroes have decided that spending any more crystals would be folly, you jump over to the Overlord, who has their own crystals to play with and spend on movement and defense and re-rolls, but more importantly, they have this, the river. Now, if the crystals are fun to fiddle with, this is some next level shit. You can activate any monster group you want or the events of the scenario, but they all have a cost. And you pay that cost, then you, ooh, pick up the card and ah, uh, slide it in at the end. And actually, for your second monster group of the turn, you can even activate it again if you want to pay that cost. And this is so much fun, you know? It's like being sat at the controls of a miniature's mecha or DJing the hero's death. Conan's got no stamina left. Let's pump up the volume. All right, ladies and gents, I'd like you all to join me in wishing Conan an 80th birthday. Doesn't look a day under 75. Happy birthday, Conan. And now it's time to get on board the Venga bus. Overall, Conan is strategic without being slow and clever without being complicated, which is exactly what you want in an evocative miniatures game. But before we set your wallet trembling with fear, there are a couple of things we're not too keen on. So let's just jump into them. First of all, the dice. Every time you're oh doing God. something awesome, like when you're hitting the hardest, when you're about to do something, boom, when you want to just get a handful of dice and explode them onto the board, you end up having to just pick up a couple of reds and re-roll them because you haven't actually got that many of them. Mm. Now, they are releasing a retail pack of more dice next year for about $10. And, you know, fine, but we're not going to tell you how to live your life, but it's probably the kind of behavior that 
Conan would deem dishonourable and gut you for. Don't go and gut any publishers. Anyway, beyond that, we have to start nitpicking. So the done thing in miniatures games these days is to link missions together in, an, in a story, a campaign. Conan? No. You have one-off vignettes. You play a game of Conan once, and then you can play it again or not. But actually, that's okay, you know? Sometimes these campaigns can feel like a commitment or even a slog, and Descent or Imperial Assault in particular have this exponential complexity curve as yeah. heroes gather all these trinkets to them. Conan doesn't have that, but that then just means they don't have to balance for a campaign and lets them get on with the kind of calculations they're good at, such as boat plus boat plus rules for leaping between them equals awesome. Another thing we could try criticizing, maybe? is that the box says that Conan is a two to five player game. Yeah. But the, all the scenarios in here, almost all of them are for an overlord and three heroes. And that's actually okay too, because Conan plays best with three heroes. Four, it gets a little choppy and there's not enough room for everybody to express themselves. Three is great. So really, Conan is a two to five player game where some of the time, Fewer numbers of players just have to control uh, extra heroes by proxy, and that's okay too. That's perfectly okay. What isn't as okay is the fact that sometimes these characters have special abilities that just aren't featured in the missions. Oh yeah. So you might have like Mr. Shevatas, who's who's really really good at opening boxes um, and chests, but if you're not playing a mission with any chests, then he's just a bit useless. Or with Belit, who's the pirate queen in charge of uh, pirates. And if you're playing her on a mission without any pirates, that's like her good thing. If she hasn't got her pirates, then it's just a bit weird. Now these differences are okay when you're playing in a full campaign, you know? You might have a character that's useless on one mission, but then they'll get their chance to shine. So with this kind of vignette individual mission system, it doesn't really work as well. And I mean, also the fact that, yes, it isn't balanced, and in a way, I get that, because Conan is supposed to be Conan. And that means that what Conan does is he sort of runs into a room, whirls around a little bit, and then everything dies. I mean, that's his job. He's sort of like a Roomba, but for mortality instead of fluff. But still, not having to have this balance is cool, and it's Conan, and I get it, and Conan should be the beefy best. But it just sometimes means that when you're not playing as Conan, you get given another character, and you look at the mission you're actually playing in, it's a bit like being given a wonky third-party N64 controller. And briefly jumping back to the subject of Belit, let's talk about this game's depiction of women, because it's bad enough that women or parents might reasonably not want to touch this game with a barge pole. So out of Conan's 74 miniatures, which just sort of kind of references enough, this, this amount plus a tiny bit more, there's actually only two female figurines, um, both of which are wearing lingerie. Uh, you've got Queen Belit is the only playable one, who looks less like she's owning her nudity and more like she's a promotional model at a convention who really can't wait to just go home, have a bath, and then possibly quite a lot of ice cream. And then we have lady number two, a generic woman who is sometimes used in the campaigns as a princess, other times as a peasant priest, which kind of gives you a little bit of a clue about the one note uh, depiction going on. The front of the hero's manual features a depiction of a woman who clearly is so relaxed about Conan's ability to save her that she's actually just having a nap. And in the first mission, it even says that after the heroes discover her, she counts as an object. And it's like, yeah, you've... You've made that quite clear. An argument that I thought might be fair and was willing to hear out about this wincingly 1930s depiction of women in the 2016 board game is that this is some kind of historical document, right? Monolith have talked in the past about working with a Robert E. Howard historian to keep them on the straight and narrow. So to uh, have women in some kind of different role in Conan would be to pave over Howard's original vision. But then actually we did a lot of research into this and something interesting is that this game already paves over Howard's original vision to do with race, right? So this is Robert E. Howard's Hyborian Age. And if you look, it looks like our world, right? There's Africa, there's Asia. That's because Howard's Hyborian Age is meant to be our world before the dawn of recorded history. So in the original Conan stories, you have the nation of Kitai who were ethnically Chinese and who Howard chose to make dark sorcerers. Conan doesn't like magic, and so then you have Conan's natural enemy being the Chinese. 
early next year, Monolith are actually releasing an expansion set in Kitai. But predictably, they're not filling it with ethnically Chinese miniatures. It looks like they're going for a more generic dark wizard look. And actually, in this base set, you get a whole lot of picked miniatures. Now, Conan's picks were a sort of uh, tribe inspired by the Iroquois, right? But what we get here is a more troglodyte looking people. And that makes sense too, because obviously you don't want a game where Conan cuts down Native Americans by the dozen. So, my point is that what Monolith have proved here is that they don't want to go near Conan's racism. What they've also done is said that they're fine embracing the sexism. They're not objective historians, and it, now we've done our homework, we've realised it's never as simple as that. If you'd like to see what Conan looks like with a more modern hand on the tiller, last year Brian Wood and Becky Cloonan collaborated on a reboot of the Conan comic that actually starts with the story where Belit first appears, and you still get a topless Belit seduced by Butch Conan, but where Belit is terrifying, her sexuality is more in her control rather than her being swept along by this male protagonist, and she gets to meet a leaner, more athletic Conan who's drawn for female gaze, and arguably more true to Howard's original vision of Conan. The whole thing is still unquestionably, to use Monolith's consulting historian's own words, true to the atmosphere and philosophy of Conan, but everybody wins. So I mean, tonally it's less defensible than a fort made of cake, but it is what it is, and it's up to you how much you care about that. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going now? Where tavern we... brawl. A tavern? I know. Tavern a good time. Tavern, tavern a good time. Da -da -ba -da 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 -da. Um, give me a beer. Well, where are what are we doing in the review again? Uh, I think we were saying how fun this game it was. It is fun. Oh, no. It's really fun. How, I can't remember the last time we played a fun game. Um, have, have we ever reviewed any fun games before? God, you know, I don't think we've reviewed any fun games. Well, we have now. Oh, boy. Oh, is this the bit where I do a joke about what is best in life? <laughs> no, Matt. No, because that movie is a masterpiece, and I'm not going to reduce it to a meme by taking John Milius' best work and just turning it into a joke, yeah? Not under my roof. Yes, Dad. Mm. But... It does cost £70, which is what two games cost sometimes. And £70 is a lot of money. Or maybe it isn't. I haven't looked at the economy this morning. Ah! <laughs> the world! The world! But uh, if you're still on the fence, um, then we'd recommend we might nudge you off that fence towards the side of waiting till 2017. Don't fall off an actual fence. It's a metaphor. You'll hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing is, you know, at the moment, there's only eight scenarios and you might want to go onto their website and see how many more there are. Because mm. for 70 quid, you really are looking at wanting more scenarios to get your money's worth. You here. could probably try all of Conan's uh, scenarios in a week of playing and then it's just replaying them, which isn't quite the extravagance and luxury we want. That said, if you're an amateur game designer, we think it should push you off the fence the other way, you know? I've never played a game in five years of doing Shut Up and Sit Down that has so many toys and trinkets and spells and tables and wells for you to play with. There are so many tokens and spells and items in this game that literally aren't used at all, crying out for a designer to figure out what to do with them. This game, these components, feels to me, to a creative person, like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Or like, more like an all-you-can-produce buffet. Don't go to a buffet and, and produce as much as you can, though. That's a, that's a metaphor and you will hurt yourself. Absolutely. Uh, the other problem is the fact that this is a kickstarted game, which means that, yes, you're going to have community people putting together cool scenarios, but people who got the kickstarted version of the game have more stuff, which means... If the majority of the community, which is based off the Kickstarter thing, which is likely initially, are making Scenario scenarios for the miniatures, for the miniatures and, the... and bits in this, then it means if you buy it in the shop now, so... So it's mm. not a sure thing that the base set will get a huge amount of scenarios. It's probable. Just wait. Just make sure. Hold off. See what happens. Mm. But hey, while you're waiting, why not learn to kill a real man with a real sword? Here's Paul Dean reporting live from Vancouver with an inexplicable segment on sword fighting. Thank you, Quinns. So who knew, but it turns out there's an increasing number of places around the world that will let you, an adult, according to at least the loosest definition of the phrase, to actually pick up and use a sword against other consenting parties. And I'm not talking about Olympic fencing here, and while I'm sure there is a lot of nobility in shuffling back and forward and doing the pokes, I'm talking about the growing love for what's called 
like Western martial arts or historical European martial arts, and that means things a little more dynamic, like the rapier or the longsword, or if you're very lucky, maybe a quarterstaff as well. These are the weapons of history, but they're also the weapons of high fantasy. And here's the thing. A single person effectively trained in the use of one of these weapons is basically a warrior. You are a warrior. Have you ever tried using a sword? If you've never done it before, have you actually tried it? You're rubbish, you are rubbish. Go on, try, but a little bit of practice. Try it out and you will actually be able to floor three rubbish people in a row. You will be able to beat them. You will basically be on the way to becoming Conan. You will be 60% Conan. You will be Cone. Now, I'm all right, I'm not actually really a trained warrior yet, but I'm better than I used to be. And if, like, uh, if there was a fight, I could easily defeat two, probably two shit goblins, or maybe like an orc. If there was like, if there was an orc over there and you were like, ah, there's an orc, I'd be like, don't worry, I'll deal with the orc. You can deal with do the, the shopping or something, go and get groceries. The point is, now that I've been doing this for a while, fencing for a while, I've come to increasingly appreciate a that it's way better than going to the gym for like being active and getting out and doing interesting things it's so much better than that and b it's not about raw force it's not actually about what you might think a world of conan is anyway it's not macho muscle chunky meat men it's about control over clout and, and precision over power it's actually an exercise that's about discipline and it's about intelligence and it's about dedication. And if you like playing games and getting better at games, you could really, really like fencing. But if you just want to do this because you think it'll be exciting to run around with swords and wave those about and sort of, you know, be a bit cool and swashbuckly, that's okay. That's a reason that a lot of people are doing it because it's just really good. It's also increasingly inclusive. I'm sure it will depend maybe partly on where you go and, and where you are. But where I go in Vancouver, the school is run by women. And it's hugely diverse. I don't want anyone to think that they can't pick up a sword and start doing this based on, on who they are, what society's, society's assumptions might be of, of what they are supposed to do. You too can fence, but you too can also look very, very cool with a sword. And like me, after doing it for a little while, you could also kill a shit goblin or an orc. It's actually a man over there. I'm in a, a better go. Thanks, Paul. And if you'd like to have a go at sword fighting, you can print off your very own free paper fighting sword on our digital website. So just head straight over to http colon colon forward slash forward slash forward slash shut up and sit down dot com forward Thanks for watching. Bye.